Hey everyone, today we'll be configuring AutoFS with the NFS server we set up in the previous video. If you haven't watched that one, I encourage you to do so. So anyways, to start, I'll open up a terminal and grab a root shell just like usual. What we'll first want to do is make sure that we have the AutoFS packages installed. So I'll just do that with yum install AutoFS and just say yes to that. And there we go, we got it installed. We can then enable the service with systemctl enable autofs, and now it's enabled. Okay, so before we start playing with this stuff, make sure to remove the fs tab entry for the nfs share from last video. So I'll just open up etc fs tab and comment out this last line right here for our nfs share. We won't need this line anymore since we'll be using autofs going forward. So I'll just write and quit the file. And uh, we can also unmount the NFS share if it was mounted previously. Running DF will show me that the share is still mounted. Um, and so we can unmount it with umount mount NFS one. That's the mount point. And now it's unmounted. Okay, so let's really get started by jumping into the etc auto.master configuration file. And you'll notice that out of the box, AutoFS is already trying to do a couple of things. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to comment out these lines for auto.misc and the host's mappings. Um, we'll start simple by creating a direct mapping, which is a good analog to the traditional mount that we're already used to. By that I mean we'll have a discrete mount point with no dynamic stuff going on. So we can figure out how to do that by checking the good old man page for auto.master. So I'll just do that in the second tab of my terminal, and we'll just apropos for autofs. And the first result there is for auto.master, so we'll check that one out right away. Auto.master. And right here on the first page, basically, we'll see the magic characters for creating a direct map. It's just a slash and a dash for the mount point section. So we can head back to auto.master and try that out. So we'll go to the end of the file, then create a new line. And in here we'll specify slash and a dash for direct mapping, and then we'll give it a file. So that would be etc, and we'll call our direct map file auto.direct. So that looks good. So we can just write and quit there. And then we'll create that auto.direct file. So then etc auto.direct. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to actually make a map file. So we can go back to man, just to a different man page. Uh, we'll check this one for autofs5. So man5 autofs. And this one talks about the format for auto mounter map. So this seems like the right place to be. So if we scroll down a little bit, um, maybe even a little bit more, uh, here's the example for an indirect map file but what we want is a direct map. So here's an example. It's just a mount point, a discrete mount point, and then the resource that we want to mount. And um, going back up to here, uh, you'll see that in the middle, you can actually put some options. So like you could put in an FS type for um, NFS, for example, which is what we'll be doing. So we can actually try this for our situation with mount NFS fun. That's the mount point we created for our NFS share before. And then we can specify a dash fs type equals nfs4. Um, and I guess that's enough mount options. We already set some defaults on the server itself. And then we can specify the resource that we want to mount. So that's going to be app server 2 colon slash srv nfs1. So there we go. We can just write and quit that. And so now we can just restart the AutoFS service and see what happens. So systemctl restart AutoFS. And we'll check the status of the service. So it looks like it's OK. So now let's try to, um, well, if we check our mounts, you'll see that the NFS share is not mounted right now. So uh, we'll go and try to change into that directory mount nfs fun and uh, now as you can see 
the App Server 2 NFS share has been mounted. And we can even view the files that we put in there in the last video. So that's pretty cool. That's how to create a direct mount. I'll just clear the screen and then we can move into something a little bit more dynamic. So to do that, we'll switch out our direct mapping for an indirect mapping. You'll notice that if I pull up the etc auto.direct file from earlier, that there's a bit of a parallel here in how the directories are laid out between the client and the server. Both of them have an NFS directory and both of them have a fun directory inside of that. So I kind of did this on purpose to demo some of the pattern matching features of AutoFS. So we'll head back into auto.master and I'll show you how this can be done. So vim etc auto.master. And in here we can comment out the auto.direct line from earlier um, as we'll be replacing it with an indirect map. So the mount point for that indirect map, we can make it slash MNT um, NFS. And then we can make the file for the indirect map etc auto.indirect, just like that. There we go. So we can just write and quit that. And um, we'll go ahead and edit that auto.indirect file. So etc auto.indirect. And what we'll want to do is figure out how to make an indirect mapping. So we can refer back to our handy dandy man page. And thankfully for an indirect map, it doesn't seem too different from our direct mapping from before. We're basically just specifying a relative mount point rather than an absolute one. And then the resource and the um, file system options, all of those seem to be the same. So that's simple enough, but let's try something fancier. So we can scroll down a little bit down to this feature section where it talks about map key substitution and the wildcard key. So basically what this wildcard will do is match up with a corresponding ampersand for the name of the mount point. And we can apply this to our example where we have the same fun directory on both the client and the server, just like so. So we can put in a star for this part, for the mount point, and then we can specify our FS type just like before, NFS4. And then for our um, resource, that would just be app server 2 colon SRV NFS. And then here we would put in an ampersand. And that ampersand would stand for the fun directory, just like this wildcard would stand for the fun directory here. So we can just right and put the file and try this out. So we'll um, list the directory and it looks like the uh, fun directory mount expired. So it timed out and it's not showing us our stuff anymore, but that's okay. Cause uh, we're going to be restarting AutoFS anyways. So systemctl restart AutoFS. And then we will check the status of that. And everything looks good. There's nothing red on the screen. And then we'll check our fun directory again. And maybe we need to CD into it once more. And there we go. So if I check DF, um, obviously just by the files being present here, you can see that our app server to NFS share has been mounted again. So as you can see, this basically accomplished the same thing as our direct map but now it's actually extensible as any new directories that we export from our server in the NFS directory will just be able to be accessed um, just like this. So maybe we might have a fun directory, but we could also have a directory called cats or something. And we would be able to see out of here and see the into cats, obviously that doesn't exist right now. And we would be able to access that. So we just made it a lot more generic for um, the ability for us to access shares on our server. So I'm going to wrap the video up here. I think we covered quite a bit. The wildcard mapping features are definitely going to be useful for um, anyone who wants to create something like a roaming profile with their home directory. That's a really common example with AutoFS, but I just wanted to show something a little more generic here. And uh, yeah, so I hope all of that helped out. Thanks for watching.